Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Current Economy and Investment Insights. Today is March 1st, 2021. Paul is uh, Paul Munical with Ameriprise is at his studio to keep distance with me, and I'm Ron Jankowski with Channel 4 in Palos Heights. Uh, Paul is going to give us an update as to what took place last week, and I'm going to let you take it from there, Paul. Thanks, Ron. This morning, I'm going to talk about the global recovery and is it broadly progressing much more than one might have expected. So let's take a look at the data. The Commerce Department will release its first estimate of Q4 real GDP um, late last week. Despite rapidly expanding virus infection rates during the period, the U.S. economy is thought to have expanded at a relatively strong 4.2%. That's according to Bloomberg consensus. We estimate the pace to have been stronger, and we note that there is a wide range of estimates for the period. We estimate real GDP to have grown at a 5.3% rate in Q4, while the latest estimate from the Atlanta Federal Reserve's GDP now is for a gain of 7.2%. The International Monetary Fund also recently updated its global forecasts. Forecasters at the organization upgraded their growth estimates for, the, for generally every major country and region of the world. This follows the broad upgrades the IMF issued at the time of their October update. For the U.S., the IMF is now projecting a 3.4% year-over-year decline in activity. Now, this is generally in line with our full-year estimate and a substantial improvement over the IMF's projections in late spring. In their June Outlook update, the IMF projected a full-year decline of U.S. GDP of 8%. Our estimate at the time was for a 5.6% decline. Now, by October, the IMF forecast had improved to down 4.3% based on what was a broad, better than expected rebound in overall U.S. activities. You know, it's funny, Ron, we get all kinds of projections and everyone, everyone's always guessing what's going to come next. And when it comes to this, your guess is as good as ours, too. This is the data we have at this time. Um, the good news about the data is it's pointing to a strong recovery after the surge in coronavirus last year. But as we all know, coronavirus is far from over, so this data can change at any time. Um, just stay patient, keep your eyes on the long term, and, and hope for the best. Uh, that's it for me on the first half, Ron. I'll send it back over to you. And thank you, Paul, for the update. And this information just came to us from Enterprise this morning. And I'm going to read it off to you. Global equities are rebounding from last week's broad sell-off amid a spike in bond yields. Treasury yields are retreating from their highs last week as of the 10-year fallback below 1.45%. The technology sector is leading the U.S. stocks higher with NASDAQ Composite Futures higher by nearly 1.5%. And the CDC approved Johnson & Johnson one-shot COVID-19 vaccine for those 18 years of age and older. And that is the information that has been shared from Ameriprise. But I also want to give you the year-to-date returns. I guess, again, this is year-to-date. S&P 500 is a plus 1.7%. The Dow Jones is a plus 1.4%. NASDAQ is a 2.4% plus. And that's it for that uh, information for the, uh, the trading floors and information on the financials. Stay with us. We will be right back with your money. And Paul usually has a, an interesting topic. Stay with us. And we're back with your money. Thank you for staying with us. Paul usually has a very interesting topic appropriate for this time of the year. Paul, take it away. Thanks, Ron. Um, for the second half of the show today, I wanted to discuss, like we often do, financial goals. 
But I want to talk about some that we're hoping you can keep. Um, a little bit on the easier side, these goals today. Um, so let's begin. The start of a new year gives many people motivation to take a fresh look at their finances and focus on their goals for the future. But as the year progresses, this enthusiasm can fall to the wayside. So if you're someone who falls into this trap, there are steps you can take to stay motivated and set attainable goals for 2021 and beyond. Number one, be specific and realistic. Setting aspirational goals, such as living the life you want in retirement or taking a coast-to-coast -coast trip, it's exciting and can be a great place to start. Yet broad goals can quickly become overwhelming. So tangible ones can help you keep the commitment. The best way to make your dreams a reality is to break each goal into small specific tasks that are realistic to accomplish in this year. Next, you're going to want to prioritize. So you're not alone if you have a myriad of financial goals. However, it can be hard to achieve them without focus or unlimited resources. Maybe pick one or two goals to start, tailoring your savings, time, and resources accordingly. If you have compelling priorities, such as saving for your child's education and your retirement, Create a plan that will help you make measurable progress towards both. Remember, incremental changes and savings made over time can make a big difference in the long run. Next, you're going to want to set deadlines. Without target dates in mind, goals tend to drift. As you set deadlines for each task, consider adding a reminder <clears throat> on your calendar to keep the goal a priority throughout the year. If you fall short of what you want to accomplish, don't give up. Just adjust your dates and get right back on track. Next, maybe enlist family support. So if you're married or in a committed relationship, involve your sparse, your excuse me, involve your spouse or partner in financial goal setting. If your goal is a family affair, consider including your children in the progress in the process. Your children can benefit from watching you make smart financial choices. And with everyone on the same page, you can support one another and overcome obstacles together. And finally, work with a professional. Share your goals with your financial advisor, tax professional, or estate planner as appropriate. These specialists may be able to suggest additional strategies to help you keep your goals while being mindful of your other financial priorities. And as always, if at home you are working with a financial professional, that's great. Continue to do so if they're giving you the advice um, you think is worthy. But if you're not working with someone or if you're looking for a second opinion, always feel free to give me a call directly and I'll do what I can to help. My number is 708-226-3412. Hope everyone has a great week, is able to keep up with that snowstorm from over the weekend, and um, we'll be back next week with a new topic and show. Thank you, Paul, for that interesting topic, and for Paul Municle, again, with Ameriprise Financial, and myself, Ron Jankowski, with Channel 4 and Bale of Sites. We wish you good investment day. <music>